Republicans plan to capitalize on Trump's criminality for decades. The GOP's alleged hostility to the deep state is nothing more than a setup to co-opt state power for themselves. It stands to reason that once the Republicans succeeded in corrupting the Supreme Court confirmation process to pack it with far-right justices they would turn their attention to the Justice Department. What good is having a partisan high court, after all, if the Justice Department, DOJ, is going to refuse to do the bidding of whatever Republican is in the White House? If you want to truly corrupt a democracy you need to do it holistically to ensure that all the levers of power are working together. It's been a long time coming but it looks like Republicans believe they've finally found their moment. They're now openly announcing their intention to discard all the rules and norms that have governed the arm's-length relationship between the president and the DOJ for the past 50 years. Donald Trump made that clear in his speech at his Bedminster Golf Club on Tuesday night. Donald Trump has always said he intended to do this sort of thing, of course. He cried throughout his presidency, where's my Roy Cohn, the execrable lawyer who mentored the young Donald Trump, when he wasn't serving every nefarious character in American life from Joseph McCarthy to Richard Nixon to John Gotti. When he ran in 2016, Trump told Hillary Clinton to her face in a national debate that he planned to put her in jail and constantly demanded that the Justice Department prosecute his enemies. His attorney generals knew what the boss wanted. The White House counsels all knew what he wanted. In fact, everyone in America knew what he wanted because he openly demanded it in speeches, on television and on social media. The DOJ didn't entirely follow through but they made a stab at it. As I wrote the other day, Trump was plotting behind the scenes against the advice of White House lawyers to make it happen and eventually former Attorney General Bill Barr did relent and assigned a U.S. attorney to review all the Clinton investigations. He eventually announced that found nothing new. And in an unprecedented move, Barr also stepped in to save two of Trump's top cronies, former National Security Advisor Michael Flynn and Roger Stone. He then named John Durham as special counsel to investigate the FBI's investigation of Russian interference in the 2016 election. But Trump was held back from doing his worst at various choke points in the system, particularly the rules and norms that have governed the relationship between the President and the Justice Department after the revelations that came out of the Watergate scandal. For 50 years, the DOJ has operated as a quasi-independent agency in which it was understood that the president would make general policy but would not be involved in individual cases. Now the Republican Party has decided it's time to change all that. The New York Times reported on Tuesday that the new MAGA establishment, led by coup conspirator Jeffrey Clark and Russell Vaught, Trump Administration Director of Office of Management and Budget, and Freedom Caucus guru, has some big plans. Republicans enamored with the unitary executive theory, such as Bill Barr, have always believed that those post-Watergate reforms were foolishly restrictive and unrealistic but they worried that the silly voters would react badly to blatantly hackish partisanship so they always kept up the pretense of an independent justice department. Both parties have complained about politicized DOJs over the years but it's only the Republicans who've made it clear that they don't even believe in the concept, at least when Republicans are in power, anyway. Ironically, by engaging in blatant corruption and open criminal behavior as both a president and presidential candidate, Donald Trump has given them the opportunity they've been waiting for. The fact that he doesn't try to hide his depraved indifference to rules, norms, and laws means that the Justice Department under a Democratic administration was left with no choice but to completely abandon the rule of law or enforce it knowing that the Republicans will cynically stage a monumental tantrum that they can use as an excuse to do what they want to do anyway. And that's exactly what they're doing. This goes way beyond Trump. In fact, I suspect they will be happy if Trump is convicted and they can wave the bloody shirt to justify removing any barriers to total control of federal law enforcement. Certainly, the next generation of MAGA leaders are all in on this idea. Take Florida Governor Ron DeSantis who has backed this vacuous claim of a weaponized Department of Justice and promised to follow the same program only on steroids. With a mind-boggling lack of self-awareness, 
the governor who is banning books, abridging the speech of educators, firing elected prosecutors, creating his own police forces, attacking private businesses and much much more said, you can't have one faction of society weaponizing the power of the state against factions that it doesn't like. The fact is that the Republican Party's alleged hostility to the deep state is nothing more than a setup to co-opt state power for themselves. They've chafed under the rules and regulations that preclude them from behaving like crooks and liars such as Richard Nixon and Donald Trump for the last 50 years. They don't want to get rid of the deep state, they just want to get rid of all the impediments to using it the way they believe it's meant to be used, against their political enemies. Trump's flagrant criminality has perversely given them exactly the excuse they need to do it. Republicans plan to capitalize on Trump's criminality for decades. The GOP's alleged hostility to the deep state is nothing more than a setup to co-opt state power for themselves. It stands to reason that once the Republicans succeeded in corrupting the Supreme Court confirmation process to pack it with far-right justices they would turn their attention to the Justice Department. What good is having a partisan high court, after all, if the Justice Trump is only a CO star in America's unreality show. His voters see no reason to disown a dishonorable champion against dishonorable opponents. Decide how you want to intervene to influence a presidential election. Identify some top secret intelligence dredged from the compendious internet to justify your desired action, confident the justification can't be examined or easily criticized by outsiders. This is exactly what happened in the FBI's handling of the Hillary Clinton email case, though the press is loath to acknowledge it. It happened again in the collusion investigation. The same pattern was used in the Hunter Biden laptop episode. The pattern is surprisingly applicable even in the latest kerfuffle, the indictment of Donald Trump for improperly keeping intelligence documents. Don't expect actually to see the documents. Do expect to be inundated with official statements and press leaks characterizing Mr. Trump's possession of them as a DEFCON-level threat to national security. Every bit of recent history suggests government claims require careful flyspecking. Take the indictment's emphasis on an audio recording of Mr. Trump allegedly flaunting a military strike plan for Iran to a visiting writer at his club in Bedminster, New Jersey, rather than at Mar-a-Lago, where an FBI raid showed Mr. Trump stored his presidential papers. The government doesn't actually specify that such a document was found or that it was secret, a separate catalog in the indictment suggests a possibly relevant document was unmarked as to classification. Prosecutors may already know they can't prove Mr. Trump wasn't waving a takeout menu to rebut a former military advisor then criticizing him in the news. But the anecdote was featured in the indictment and went over well in news coverage. The larger problem here is becoming metastatic. Anybody can claim anything, then a government official can dignify the claim as intelligence and use it as the basis for action. The FBI in particular has shown itself increasingly willing to use false information to advance its goals. It started when FBI Chief James Comey used false Russian intelligence to clear Hillary Clinton's path to the 2016 nomination and spare the Obama Justice Department the 